Hi, my name's John and welcome to our brand new collection, the 2020 Trend Report by Tony and Guy. The technique that I'm working on is called the blow up and it's really working with hair's natural texture, tight curls, loose curls and we're exaggerating volume within the areas uh, whilst maintaining length on the perimeter. The sectioning pattern is working from a pivoted area at the crown. So starting from crown and working through to recession area. From there, we're then working a pivot to just behind the ear. Behind your pivoted area, we're working with an irregular zigzag shape just so that we've got that seamless texture that sits on top of something that's heavier through the perimeter. To start off the technique, I'm going to work through our first side panel. I'm working from our pivot point. Now this area here is where I imagine the knot of the bow would be. So everything's working from that point and pushing forward. Through our side panel, I'm just working horizontally, parallel to your initial parting. I'm going to comb the hair straight up 90 degrees. And our line cut is going to be working from square to inverted in towards the face. So we get a slightly heavier feel at the crown, working to something slightly shorter around the front. For that, we're going to point cut, and you would just change your cutting technique dependent upon the texture of the hair that you're working with. My fingers are in line with the parting that I'm working on. To work our next section, our second section, with pivoting from that crown area, where we imagine the knot of the bow to be, working lower down within the section. Working up to and over directing to that guide, which is our initial section that we placed in. Starting from the crown. Following parallel to our parting. Horizontal and surrounded. Repeat on the opposite side, we take our section parallel and work that along in exactly the same format. We can see our guide to length. Standing on the opposite side of the section that we're working on allows us to maintain tension whilst distributing the hair.
we lift our next section, distribute and elevate up to our initial guide and repeat as we did on the opposite side. It's at this point our technique can be varied on mid or longer hair types. We could work square all the way through to the front or we could create an even more exaggerated round layer to give you more volume and more weight removal. We're just going to check the balance of the shape now, give it a little shake through, see that natural texture starting to form. Now we're going to progress on through to the top panel. So my next point now would be just to work with an isolation below that parting. So just following that same technique, almost as if you're taking your first guide. Once we've released our top section, we're then going to just work from our pivot point in line with your parting, the hair is then combed and over-directed outwards towards your first section that we placed in as your guides. And it's this area here that allows us to work shorter internally through to longer. It'll be shorter internally, over-directing longer towards the top. So we get that volume that sits in and away from the perimeter. So in that previous shape of working square into round. And it's these shorter internal panels that are going to help to blow up the volume through towards the top. Now actual bows have been a massive fashion story for 2019, 2020, within hair accessories, within fabrics, even within backpacks. So it made a natural choice when wanting to work a hair cutting technique. We pivot from our crown area until we reach profile parting. Everything is over directed out to your first stationary section. As we get towards the front, just drop the elbow and the finger position to decrease the length. And your final parting will work from your pivot point through to profile. We work over directed from the profile through to the outside to your first section. Okay. We then repeat the same technique through on the opposite side. Okay, working up to our last section from profile parting over directing out your stationary guide, which is that first section that we initially created. Making sure we've got that clean, even distribution of hair. As we're working onto that guide, and with point cut, working square into inverted. Now by working with this inversion, shorter at curvature of the head and longer through to profile also helps to elongate the shape into a teardrop towards the face so it separates your fringe area from your perimeter sides. Now 
all I want to do through the back is just work a small section just at that locking point and that connection through the crown area. We're just going to take a small subsection that's going to help provide our guide. To start off through the back, we're working with a profile section, and this is going to provide our guide for the rest of our pivoting sections through the back area. Starting off with profile, we take that from the crown through to our irregular zigzag sectioning pattern, and we're going to work that square. So that we're connecting into our previous guide and we're starting to gradually maintain length towards the perimeter. We don't have to worry about how short we go here. Our guide is where we want the volume to sit. Our perimeter length is already isolated below the zigzag. From that point, we're then going to pivot our sections upon reaching the parting behind the ear on both sides. Now, pivoting sections on long hair is something that we see heavily within our staff training and future foundations training. And what we're doing here is really looking at how we can push the boundaries and take the idea of inverted layering to the next level. If working on a shorter length, feel free to work more rounded, or if you feel the need, with finer hair to maintain more weight towards the perimeter. By all means, invert the length to maintain more weight. Subdivide. We don't need to work with over direction because that weight that we've got behind the ear is maintained below our diagonal partings as well. As with all techniques that we work with Tony Guy, Everything can be adapted to suitability of hair type, hair texture, whether that's straight, wavy or curly, finer or thicker. We would just adjust our elevations and our cutting techniques to adapt. Again, this technique we could work on shorter or more mid-length shapes. when we're looking at working creatively. We want to really have fun with what we're doing. Then lastly, just check balance of your layers through the back. And we check our perimeter length. And our final part of the technique is just literally to point cut square, low elevation, just to strengthen up that perimeter. And you can see where we've got those shorter layers around the face, how that's nicely just sitting back behind the shoulders. The next part of the technique we're just going to work with some curl defined foam. Now product preparation on curly hair is super important. It absorbs a lot more products than your straighter hair types um, and we can afford to place a little bit more in. Looking at where the hair is slightly more, uh, where the cuticle is lifted, we can afford to apply a little bit more and really it's about controlling the hair. As the hair starts to dry, we can then make it much bigger. But my initial part, working with generous amounts of the Label M Curl Defined Foam 
and that's going to give us control, strengthen the curl, and give the curl longevity. Now to finish the curl, we're going to go with a twisting technique. And this is where we're working with small twists from the nape area through to the top. Just working in opposite directions so that we don't get anything that's too uniform. And here is just where we're trying to promote the curl just to form back together. To help, I'm going to use some of the Curl Define Cream. And we're going to, with those twists, just apply an extra coating of product from root to tip and define the curls. And we repeat this technique all the way from the nape through to the front and then we'll dry off. So finally, just working with some more of the Curl Define Cream and we're just twisting the hair forward from the crown just so that we don't encourage any specific parting. We want the hair just to sit as it would do naturally but with volume. When diffusing the hair it's important to work with a slightly hotter setting and a slower speed. What we want to do also is try not to play around with the hair too much as this encourages too much frizz. So just kind of emulating the hair drying naturally. So once we've dried the hair, um, we're starting to separate the hair, shake it through, and we can see where we had that lock at the crown area, and we've really just blown that volume out through to the sides. The final part of the technique is where we just want to now start to pick up sections of hair, and when we're working irregularly on curly hair, we're just freehanding, just slide cutting through some of that shape, working with some twists. stretching the hair and really just working a little bit more seamless through here. Without trying to take away from the volume that we've placed in, it's really just about softening that perimeter area. taking quite irregular sections. Some are smaller than the others. We don't have to work too uniform now. Once we've just started to work seamlessly through the perimeter, really going into the structure of the hair and breaking that shape up as well. Just so we've got that blend of texture running from the front and throughout. And curly hair has become really relevant within fashion, really utilizing the model's own statement personality and natural movement and not being afraid to wear their own hair. And to finish the shape, what we're going to do is exaggerate the curls, really separate that, but still keep that quite luxurious feeling, so keeping shine within the shape as well. And we're going to use the wax spray. For now we just want to get that even distribution of product all the way through within the hair. I worry about actually styling and putting the structure of the shape back in there afterwards. And then lastly, some of the Label M hairspray. So you can see actually on this longer length of hair, the narrower area is just going to sit round about the jawline. And you can see where we had that inversion of shape towards the curvature, how that is just sitting slightly tighter in towards the sides. On shorter hair, that elevation could be slightly higher. So it's a variable kind of shape. It's really about the length of the hair that you're working on and the suitability. So here we have the completed look 
of the blowout for our 2020 Tony and Guy trend report. And you can see using that inspiration of bows within fashion, massive fashion trend within hair accessories, within clothes, backpacks, and now within hair shapes. Fantastic color work, Francesco. And what an amazing shape, Johnny, really. It's so much fun working with curly hair. And I really wanted to approach this te technique from a different point of view. So working with tools that generally we're using for setting, but actually working within the color. Uh, the application itself is really quick, as you've seen from the step-by-step. -step. And we really are focalizing on this area that needs to be the volumized from the crown, so keeping a little bit deeper and darker. At the same time, it's really drifting the color throughout in a very sun-kissed way. Um, just a great fun to work with. It's been a great pleasure to share with you today my Girls on Curls and uh, I hope to see you all in the Academy.